Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In the previous lectures, we have studied the topics which were laid down uh, the theoretical basis of experimental model analysis. Uh, we also studied characteristics of FRFs and we also looked at signal processing for model analysis. A bit of signal processing we will further study in later lectures. Um, so in the next few lectures, now we are going to look at how experimental model analysis is carried out. Um, we will look at what are measurements that are taken, how measurements are taken and then how the measured data is analyzed to obtain the model parameters. Uh, so, but before that we are going to today look at what is the basic principle of experimental model analysis. So, the topic today is uh, basic principle of experimental model analysis. And we will abbreviate uh, experimental model analysis as EMA. So, the first question is that what is experimental model analysis? So, in one of the earlier lectures, we already defined what is experimental model analysis, but let us uh, restate that definition. Uh, so, what is EMA? So, EMA is also known as model testing and EMA is basically a procedure for experimentally identifying the natural frequency, mode shapes and damping factors of a structure or a system, right. So, EMA is Uh, experimentally identifying the natural frequencies mode shapes and damping factors Right, of a structure or a system. Uh, these characteristics, natural frequency, mode shape, damping factors are also known as uh, dynamic characteristics or modal parameters. So, we can say that these characteristics are also known as dynamic characteristics of the structure or modal parameters. Right? Uh, now, if we want to know these characteristics, uh, can we measure them directly? Can we measure these characteristics directly? So, can we measure modal parameters directly? Like for example, uh, if we want to know the dimensions of an object, we directly measure, we can directly measure the dimensions of an object. So, similarly, is it possible to directly measure these characteristics or the modal parameters? No, we cannot directly measure. The modal parameters they depend you know on more fundamental properties of the structure right like uh, dimensions, geometry, boundary conditions, material properties right and therefore uh, you know they are related to these fundamental properties by an abstract relationship like through an agonally problem and therefore they cannot be directly measured. Thus these characteristics cannot be measured directly. cannot be measured directly ok. So, how can we measure the model parameters? Or determine model parameters?
uh, model parameters you know reveal themselves in the dynamic response of the structure to dynamic forces okay uh, so therefore if uh, we have the knowledge of the dynamic forces acting on the structure and the response uh, you know those forces result uh, then from these two pieces of information uh, it is uh, it should be possible in principle to determine the model parameters therefore what can be done is that we can apply the forces on the structure uh, and measure the forces being applied and the responses it results right and from these two pieces of information it should be possible to estimate or determine the model parameters so uh, model parameters reveal themselves in the uh, response to the dynamic forces okay and therefore uh, knowledge of forces and uh, resulting responses uh, should in principle uh, allow determination of model parameters. Uh, so, therefore, what is the basic principle of experimental model analysis? So, what is the basic principle of EMA? Uh, the experimental model analysis uh, can be performed either in the frequency domain or in the time domain. Okay. So, EMA can be performed in frequency domain or in time domain. So, let us look at the principle of EMA in the frequency domain first. Uh, so, in the frequency domain, the dynamic forces and the uh, responses they cause, they are related by frequency response function matrix. Okay? And the frequency response function matrix essentially constitutes the response model of the system in the uh, uh, frequency domain. Okay? So, FRF matrix relates uh, dynamic forces and responses in the frequency domain. Okay. So, therefore, FRF matrix constitutes response model right, in the frequency domain. So, if you uh, consider let us say a system with structural damping right then uh, for a system with structural damping if you look at say one of the FRF alpha j k omega okay. So, what is alpha j k omega uh, as we studied earlier it is nothing but the response at jth degree of freedom to a unit amplitude harmonic force at kth degree of freedom right and for a system with structural damping this relation uh, we have the relationship between the frequency response function and the modal parameters that we have studied in one of the previous lectures 
and that relationship is uh, summation from r is equal to 1 to n if there are n modes of the system, system having n degree of freedom. Uh, so, we have phi j r phi k r divided by omega r square minus omega square plus i eta r omega r square. So, on the left hand side we have this frequency response function FRF right and on the right hand side what we have got is of course the excitation frequency omega and apart from that we have the parameters like the jth and kth element right of rth mode shape and then we have the natural frequency omega r of the rth mode and then the loss factor of the rth mode. So, these are the uh, you know properties of rth mode okay? and you uh, know on the right hand side we have the sum from r is equal to 1 to n. So, these parameters corresponding to all the n modes are present on the right hand side okay? and of course, as far as mode shape uh, you know um, elements are concerned they are uh, you know corresponding to the j th and k -th degree of freedom as we are looking at the um, FRF alpha j k. Now, here the FRF this can be obtained by measurement can be obtained by measurement by performing a test on the structure by where we apply the force and then measure the response. Okay. And therefore, this relationship tells us that uh, you know the FRF uh, you know are they related to the model parameters and then by uh, fitting this relationship to the measured frequency response function, we can determine the model parameters uh, for you know all these modes right and of course, the mode shape uh, you know param uh, elements would be at the jth and kth degree of freedom. And if we have other uh, FRFs also being measured, then the other elements of the mode shape also can be determined. So, this is essentially the basic principle of the experimental model analysis, right? That we basically uh, measure FRF, okay, we measure the frequency response functions on this, uh, you know, structure. So, we basically then you know, perform the fitting of these expressions to the measured FRF, which this process which, uh, the, which is referred as co-fitting. Uh, if we have a system, let us say with uh, viscous damping, if we have a system with viscous damping, then uh, we have the relationship between the FRF and the model parameters given by alpha j k omega is equal to sum from r is equal to 1 to phi j r phi k r divided by i omega minus s r bar. So, here also we see that the on the right hand side you know, we have the model parameters of the system appearing right where s r bar is the complex eigen value containing information about the initial frequency and the um, you know the damping factor of the rth mode and then we have phi j r phi k r being the mode elements of the uh, j th and k th elements of the mode ship rth mode ship. So, here also we see that uh, we have the relationship between the frequency response function and the model parameters uh, which then can be fitted to obtain the model parameters of a viscously damped system. Let us now look at the principle of experimental analysis in the time domain. EMA in time domain. Uh, so, in the time domain the forces and the resulting responses they are related by impulse response function matrix right. So, we have the IRF matrix okay. and therefore, this IRF matrix forms the response model of the system in the time domain. It is nothing but the response model in the time domain. 
okay. So for a system with viscous damping, uh, one of the you know IRFs can be written as H J K T that is the IRF H J K T which is nothing but the response at jth duf uh, when a unit impulse is applied at kth duf and for a system with viscous damping this relationship for for IRF HJK is given by sum from R is equal to 1 to 2n uh, phi GR phi KR e to the power S R bar T right and here also we see that the uh, IRF this can be obtained by by measurement okay so the left hand side of the equation can be obtained by measurement and on the right hand side we have the model parameters appearing in the expression so we have the modal parameters so if uh, the irf hj can be obtained by measurement right for example we can obtain that by inverse FFT of the frequency response function alpha j k okay and then we can fit this expression uh, this equation to that you know measured impulse response function and then we can obtain the model parameters in the time domain. So this basically forms the principle of experimental model analysis in the time domain. Therefore the experimental model analysis essentially involves two major broad steps right. Uh, so the major steps in experimental model analysis. What are the major steps? The first step is uh, measurement of FRFs or IRFs. So that is the first step and the second step is curve fitting of this FRFs or IRFs. We can also represent this process by a block diagram. Uh, so we have uh, excitation, excitation of the structure, and measurement of force and response measurement of forces and responses. So that constitutes the first step and what is the output of this activity? This it basically gives us the FRFs and IRFs and the next you know step is of curve fitting. And output of this curve fitting is basically nothing but the modal parameters, right? And therefore, this whole process is basically referred as experimental model analysis or model testing. Now, how does the process of experimental model analysis compares with the process of analytical model analysis? comparison of experimental model analysis and analytical model analysis AMA. So in the analytical model analysis AMA 
uh, we basically have the spatial model of the structure which is in the form of mass, stiffness and damping matrices. And then by the analysis of this model, okay, we obtained a model model. So we have the spatial model okay, in the form of stiffness, mass and damping matrices. Right? And then the analysis of this model through eigenvalue analysis, we obtained a model model. In the experimental analysis, we basically have the response model of the structure, right? Which is in the form of FRFs and IRFs. And then analysis of this, you know, response model uh, basically leads to the description of the structure in terms of model model. The model parameters we obtain by analysis of the response model through AMA basically constitutes the model model. So we saw, th therefore, we can say that the analytical model analysis is a forward route to identifying the model model. Right? We start from a mathematical model of the structure, and by forward analysis, we obtain the model model. But in experimental model model, we start from the response model, and then by an inverse, uh, you know, procedure, we obtain the model model. So in this lecture today, we looked at the basic principle of experimental analysis, both in the frequency domain and in the time domain. I think we can now stop here. Thank you.